Geisinger is an integrated healthcare system. We serve a geographic population of almost three million people, mainly small town and rural central and northeastern Pennsylvania. And what's important about the population that we serve in terms of genetics and genomics research is that it's a relatively stable population. That means we have uh, three generation or more families, grandparents, parents, and children, all available in the region who all get most of their health care at Geisinger. We have a duty to collect as much data as possible during routine, high-quality care delivery in order to learn from it with the goal of improving care of the next patient and the next generation of patients. The Genomic Medicine Institute was established in 2011 and we thought it would be very important to engage our patients early on to understand what they thought about uh, the use of this information in their health care. We initially started doing this through uh, the use of focus groups, talk about what we were planning to do, get their feedback and use that to really help to design our programs. We elected to invest in a program looking at uh, children with undiagnosed intellectual disability. Now that whole exome and whole genome sequence sequencing is becoming available, we've realized that this is a very powerful tool uh, that has the ability to uh, diagnose uh, many of these children even that have gone through extensive diagnostic workups. We found out about it from Lee as neurodevelopmental pediatrician. He um, explained what whole genome sequencing was to us, told us that they were doing a study here at Geisinger and asked our permission to nominate Leah to be involved in it. We had been searching for um, answers for at that time like seven and a half years. And they found she has a rare gene mutation called ALG13 mutation and at the time they gave us results there were only like four or five girls that were found in the whole world to have that mutation. Since then we found more and we started like a support group. When they finally told us about Leah's gene mutation it was almost like a sense of relief. We finally had that answer and that they were still going to research more and try to find answers for us. It, it just, it felt better. It gave us closure, you know, you don't have to search anymore, we knew. If we can find an answer, then we can begin to develop a better medical plan based on an understanding of uh, what's going on. We've been working very closely with our families to develop a report in plain language that can provide the results back to them directly, connected to a report that goes back to the provider, and provide information there about what sort of questions should you talk about with your physician. Are there additional investigations that should be done? And we think that this has a real potential to improve communication uh, in these complex conditions. In addition to that, we think that this is a, a process that actually could be much more broadly applied. We're using several different methods to partner with patients in research. Several of our projects have an online community where we allow them to not only provide us research information but also ask questions. When a test sample arrives at the laboratory, there's very little information available about that individual. With Genome Connect, it allows that individual to register and to provide us additional information about their health history, other conditions or problems that they may have. We've also recently started doing more with Facebook and with Twitter, um, Pen Interest, all the social media channels. Families are organizing early, so if they have a child born with a specific genetic problem, they're often finding each other, and then our task is to find them and then to get them to consider um, working with us on research projects. We're part of the PCORI research programs and where we're actually working with patients as active researchers, so the patients are part of the research team. The purpose of today's visit is to talk about the genetics that we've uncovered in your sequence. Telegenomics is really just an extension of what's called telemedicine. Geisinger is spread out over a large geography. Rather than have every patient that needs to see our genomics team come into our center and see us, they'll be able to go to their doctor's office throughout the system and we'll be able to talk to them via this technology. We've been engaging uh, both patients and their families in this return of results after whole exome sequencing. We are looking through each of those exomes at 76 genes and returning the result only when we find a change in one of those 76 genes that we think suggests a potential risk for a medical problem. Most of those medical problems fall into the category of either cancer, susceptibility or cardiovascular disease susceptibility. 
we thought it was really important to engage patients and ethical leaders in the process. So we have created an ethical advisory board for the MyCode Biobank, which includes four national leaders, but also includes four local patients who are in the Geisinger system. As we look at genomic studies, how do we do those studies, how do we make sure that we're protecting the interests of the patients, and how do we make sure that it's meeting their needs along with our research needs. We've actually consented into our biobank now over 80,000 patients, which is more than 10% of our entire Geisinger patient population. And our current goal is at least 250,000 Geisinger patients will be consented for exome sequencing. And that this is gonna teach us how to uh, communicate, educate providers and patients about these genomic variants that change your health risk and we anticipate this kind of whole genome sequencing is going to become a part of routine healthcare in the future, maybe even part of routine newborn screening. The program that we started in genomic medicine uh, has been looked at by the entire organization. And they really have realized the value of engaging patients directly in research. This has led to a revisit of our strategic plan that puts patients as partners in research as opposed to patients as subjects. This has really been a huge philosophical change for the organization and I'm proud that we were able to uh, provide the impetus to be able to move that forward.